Hello everyone, it's Leah from Dime Culture, and today I'm going to show you how you can create your own stamp. Creating your own stamps is great for when you want to process your anger and frustration through your art. Now, when it comes to art therapy activities for anger and frustration, there are several approaches. But today I'm going to show you this approach, creating a physical item. When you work with your hands to create something, it helps you not only channel those emotions, help process them, but when you're using that same style of hands-on, tactile, physical, three-dimensional processing into a stamp, you're able to use that item that you just created to not only help you in the moment, but also help you in the future. It's kind of like a never ending gift. A gift that can be used to create art, a gift that could be used to work in your art journal or your diary, a gift that you can use in your bullet journal because maybe you like creating um, art spreads or weekly spreads, you know, whatever it is that you like to do to help you during your healing with art time your stamps that you are using right now to help you channel your anger, channel your frustration, and process it can also be used for more. I've provided a list in the description section below of the supplies that I'm using as well as links to starter kits and supplies basically that you could pick up yourself if you feel like this is a great activity for you. Now let's get into the stamp making process. For this stamp here, I drew directly onto the rubber block. When doing this, I like to keep my design simple because this approach to draw directly onto the rubber stamp block will result in your design uh, stamping opposite from what you physically see when you're looking down and drawing. So that's why I like to keep it simple. Um, by drawing a moon and stars, I know that no matter what angle I end up going with, it'll still provide, you know, multiple directions that it can be used, despite the fact that it will flip. Now, I do have a tip here for carving. Tip number one is test out your tools before you start carving. Not all the shapes that come in the kits will help for what you want to do. Some of them might be too fine for the area in which you want to carve. And then some of them might be too big. So definitely test them out before you get started. Tip two, when you are actually taking the rubber bits out of your carving sharp spot, use a pencil and not your finger. If, especially if the tool that you're using is very thin, you want to avoid cutting your finger. Tip three, carve away from you. So as you can see, I am putting the knife blade part in and then carving away. This is the best approach to avoid accidental slippage and then stabbing yourself or cutting yourself. Tip four, am I on four or am I on three? No, I'm on four. <laughs> Tip four is to use large tools for big areas. I know that seems like a no brainer, but you'll be surprised when you first get started, you'll be using one tool and you'll be like, eh, I'll just use this one item. No, definitely get the bigger one out and use it for the larger sections. And my tip number five for carving is to move the block itself. Now, this is a very important tip. When you move the block versus you moving the blade, it'll help create smoother lines. As well, it'll ensure that you yourself are not carving towards yourself. Because when you carve towards yourself, you can not only end up hurting yourself by accidentally stabbing yourself or cutting your fingers, but it'll also allow you to be able to see where the design is flowing, shaping, moving, and you won't have any accidentals. Oh my God, I just carved the wrong spot or I went too wide or went too thin, you know, no boo-boos of any kind. So yeah, definitely move the block itself. Bonus tip, carve on a scrap piece of paper. This way you can take all those extra bits and then throw them out. 
Once you feel that your design is ready to be stamped, do a test on in your sketchbook or on a, that scrap piece of paper. Make sure that the, you haven't missed any areas or that there aren't any still risen stamp spots. This way, if you are dead set on using your design right away and you wanna use it in your journal or on an art piece, you won't have any accidental ink spots like you see here. So how to get rid of those lines? Well, go back to your stamp and see where the ink is touching that's not a part of your design itself. And the most likely reason why your ink is touching is because you haven't carved away a high in those high points. So just get, go over them and get rid of them. Next, cut off any excess rubber that's not necessary for the stamp design itself. This way your stamp is also smaller and easier to store, but also you'll have less likely chances of accidental corner stampage. Because if you have excess rubber on the outside of your stamp, when you use your hands to push it down, you'll most likely end up accidentally putting the corners of your stamp into the ink and then onto your paper. So by cutting that off, you will reduce the risk of that as well. All right, let's move on to the second way you can go about creating a design for your stamp. And that second approach is best used for designs that are gonna have far more detail. I like going this way when I know I am creating something with basically details. <laughs> So what you wanna do is draw out your design. So for today's stamp, I'm actually gonna be designing a very basic star here, but the same principles apply for if you were to do something as detailed as a butterfly. Draw out your shapes, your designs, the details, map out what areas you want to actually have be a part of, of the ink versus the open space. Once you know what areas are gonna be the dark spots of your stamp, I want you to grab tracing paper and then outline the areas in which you are going to leave as black. So for the stamped space. By using tracing paper, you're able to then take the sheet once it comes time to transferring it to the block and flip it so that you are looking through the paper and then have your design opposite on the stamp. So then that way when you flip it down onto the paper to actually stamp something, you're seeing the proper layout. This is best used for not only detailed designs, but also if you're gonna do letters or words or anything like that. In order to actually get your design onto the rubber stamp, my suggestion is to grab a pencil, a scrap piece of paper, and start drawing a huge section on that paper. My suggestion for this stage is to use a soft leaded pencil, so like a 2B. Also, I like using as much of my rubber stamp as I can, so I keep a hold of all my scrap bits. And what I'm doing here is just making sure that my design will fit onto the stamp itself. Now, once you have found the place that you want it to be on the stamp, take your drawn pencil shading, put it down and then take your traced paper with a design on it and trace on top of the stamp. So this way you are actually using the pencil drawing section as if it is carbon paper, you know, something that you can use to transfer your design onto the rubber. From there, you'll now have the design on your rubber block ready to be carved. I'm not gonna show you me actually carving this one out because the process is the same as the one I showed you earlier. I just wanted to show you that there are two ways to go about getting your design onto that block and then being able to actually turn the block into art. Okay, we are reaching the end of the video. And before I say my thank yous, I just want to reiterate how creating stamps and doing this process of physically creating a 3D item, a tool that can be used down the road, can really help with processing and working through your anger or frustration. Okay. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, definitely leave that in the comment section below. I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in art and being a part of using art as a process for healing, hit that subscribe button because that's what I do here at Dime Culture. As well as follow me on Instagram because that's where I put my daily stuff with inspirational quotes and helpful tips and things like that. Okay, we've reached the end. So I'm just going to say thank you. I believe in you. And until next time, stay magical.